attacked Sadguru Sri Brahma's journey, starting from his birth village Naduapatti to Suplaburam, Parani, E. Vellanur, Tiruchirapalli and Nilgiris. We were overwhelmed and dumbfounded by the devotion of the devotees and villagers. The people we were meeting were the third generation or fourth generation of people who had directly come in touch with Sadhguru himself. Maybe just for a few days or a few hours or just once. This aspect of devotion has been carried down for over 110 years. This expression and celebration of utmost humility is something we continue to witness everywhere we went. When we started exploring a little further and deeper, we realized the impact of the magnificent phenomenon called Sadhguru Sri Brahma. It had set fire on a much larger scale than what was initially visible. He had sown seeds in different disciples and followers which later manifested in different activities. We found that these activities touched areas of initial and higher education, women empowerment, tribal upliftment, eradication of poverty and untouchability. And most of all, this work was not limited in its reach. It was carried out to such an extent that it attracted the attention of the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, even Chief Ministers of other states, but most importantly, it attracted the attention of the then Prime Minister and even the President of the country. Siddhas have been known for their deep understanding and knowledge of the human system, the microcosmos and hence the macrocosmos. From this erupted many branches of sciences like astronomy, astrology, mathematics, Siddha, Marma, Ayurveda, etc. Derived from such knowledge, they also used medicinal plants and herbs for treating ailments. We learnt about a village called Naganallur where Sadhguru Sri Brahma had taught the locals how to treat snake bites. And we also learnt that there was a family there who was still practicing this cure just as it was taught by Sadhguru Sri Brahma. Initially, we were told this place was a village near Trichy. But as we were driving for nearly two hours, we realized we were bordering Namakkal district's Kolli Hills area. Further to this, we would connect to Athur, which is on the state highway to Coimbatore. We were going to meet Sri Sadasivam, who lives in Ammampalayam with his brother. These are the only two people alive who know the medicine for poisonous snake bites as taught by Sadhguru Sri Brahma. <laughs> Oh, it seems like an old tree. Yes, maybe 200 to 300 years old. This is Periyasami temple. This is where Sadhguru Sri Brahma came and sat first. He used to sit here with his devotees and give talks. This is where they got a boy who had been bitten by a poisonous snake. They say that he had revived him back to life in this exact place. We have been doing Guru Puja and Annadanam over there by the river. This is where we do Annadanam. All the villagers come together here, around 2,000 to 3,000 people. We built a pandal and make other arrangements for Yagna. And the rest of the rituals take place by the river. We do it once a year. In Thiruvani Koel, Guru Puja happens during Thiruvadirai Nakshatram and here the following Avittam Nakshatram. The Puja goes on throughout the night and morning. All devotees participate in the night yagna followed by the morning Guru Puja 
the procession and the anadanam in the afternoon every year on guru puja it rains a miracle happens and we all celebrate happily devotees from uti coimbatore and many other places come and join This is my father, and this is my father's father, Alla Kappan, and these are his parents, Krishna Padiyachi and Chellamal. Krishna, Krishna, अपने यूर गया यार. Grandfather Alla Kappan was a kid, and he was grazing cows in the fields near the forest. मालूम है ना पारे ला पड़े चंद्र का. And he was lying on a rock. अया गुरु नादर came down the hills and woke the boy up. Before lying down, he had gone and collected two, three bottles of wild honey. When Sadguru came and tapped him, he woke up and fell at his feet. He was struck by this great being with matted hair, bearded, and looking fiercely intense. The boy offered the honey to Sadguru because he was a different kind of being. He drank all two, three bottles of honey in one go. Then Sadguru said, "Let me give you something in return," and gave him a bowl, and asked him to collect some latex from the nearby cactus tree. He collected some and came back with it. Sadguru put a herb into the white latex. It started frothing profusely in the bowl. The moment it frothed, Sadguru asked him to drink it. The boy thought, "I have collected this poisonous latex myself, and this Swami is giving it to me." He hesitated. Sadguru told him, "I am here. Don't worry. Just drink it." The boy was not convinced. Then Sadguru himself drank the frothing latex. He said, "Okay, I am leaving," and clapped, and disappeared. The boy ran and came. and informed his parents that a swami had come and this is what had happened nobody knew it was sadguru ayya the parents said such a beautiful opportunity you missed and they ran into the fields to see if sadguru can be found where was he to be found obviously they couldn't then after a few days guru nadar came back to the village guru nadar naganallu is at the foothills of kolli hills Kolli Hills is considered to be a very significant place in the Tamil Siddha community. The Shiva temple here is said to belong to Sangam era 3 BC to 3 AD. The temple of Arabaleshwarar was constructed around the already existing lingam by King Valvilvori in 2nd century AD. Arabaleshwarar is mentioned in the Sangam literatures Manimegalai Silapadigaram Puranaanur and Agananur Even today it is considered as an abode of many many siddhas In 2005 MS Swaminathan Foundation had surveyed and reported 250 sacred forests in Kolli Hills Ayurveda and Siddha practitioners even today collect herbs from these hills So it was only natural for Sadguru Sri Brahma to have spent time in these hills. My great grandmother Chellammal was a devotee by heart. She fell at his feet and invited him saying "Ayya please come." When people with ailments eye ear and such ailments came to him Sadguru would take vibhuti or the sacred ash and smear it on them. even for fever and chills he just had to smear the vibhuti on them and they would get cured no other medicine just smearing ash such was sadguru's power and grace a sakuru oda mayume apdi ella irundirukku it is worth noting that the sacred ash which is also known as basm vibhuti and baputi is held in such high regard in this culture In the South Indian tradition it is very much a part of both the household and ascetic groups. In North India 
It is used as a body smear by the intense Nagababas and other ascetics. It is also called as Shiva Virya and Shiva Kavach or Shield. This is Perumal. This is my mother's father. He used to do Anadanam in the Shiva temple. He did it for 20 years or so. He is no more. He has also met Guru Nathar. There was a millionaire from Velanur. His son was bitten by a snake and they immediately brought him to put him at Ayya's feet. He was almost dead. When a cobra bites, the person dies within a few hours. Ayya took the medicine and gave it to the boy and within half an hour, he came back to life. Being a millionaire, his father gave Sadhguru a bag of cash. I don't need money, Sadhguru said. You can get a dhoti and cloth for 10,000 people, 5 rupees each, and then get some 5 to 6 bags of rice, cook, and give annadanam to all. This happened in front of my great grandparents. Immediately they arranged for annadanam and fulfilled the instruction. Ayya has said that if somebody dies of snake bite, they are not completely dead up to three days and they can be revived. Although there won't be any breath, still they can be brought back to life, is what Ayya said. Sadhguru Sri Brahma had told them that a person can be revived even after three days of death. He had told them that only the breath would stop, but there would be other aspects with which a person could be brought back to life. We did some research on this and found an elaborate world of pranayama or pranavidya as expounded by Swami Satyananda Saraswati of Bihar School of Yoga. In this it is described that there are five major pranas and five sub or upa pranas in the body. When a person dies, first the prana exits, then slowly in phases the other pranas, apana, udana, vyana and samana exits over a period of 13 days. From this one can see the level of mastery Sadhguru Sri Brahma had not only in the herbal or Siddha sciences but also in Pranavidya or the energy system which includes the chakras. They came to know that Guru Nadar was in Thiruvani Koel. They somehow wanted to meet him. So they went walking from here. He always loved to eat honey. He took two liters of honey, puffed rice, peanuts and bunch of bananas. They kept on walking till Manachanallur. Those days there were no bus services. They went and rested for the night in a coconut grove in Manachanallur. Vairavi Mupanar was Sadhguru's disciple. He always accompanied him everywhere. Vairavi Mupanar was Guru Nadar's disciple and was with him at that time. Guru Nadar woke him up at night and told him, two of our devotees are sleeping in Manachanallur. Take a bullock cart, go and bring them here. The disciple wondered how Sadhguru knew they had come. But then he came to Manachanallur and saw them sleeping in the coconut grove. When he told them that Ayya had sent him to bring them, they were utterly surprised. Then they raised and prostrated in front of Ayya and offered honey and other things to him. He took the honey and drank two, three bottles of it. Swami, will it not harm you to drink so much? No, there is Shiva above me. Shiva is everything, he said. I am not drinking, it is Shiva. Then they stayed with him for two, three days. Krishna Padyachi was determined that he should get the medicine from Sadhguru. He had a single pointed agenda of somehow getting the list of ingredients from him. But he started shaking nervously when he went in front of Sadhguru. Don't be afraid. I know you have decided to get something from me. Sadhguru, you treated that boy from Velanur the other day, the one who was brought here with a snake bite. I wanted to know the ingredients. He said, yes, I'll come and teach you how to make the medicine. And then they left. Chalamal grandma used to be very attached and devoted to Sadhguru. When he came, she prostrated at his feet and welcomed him. She had set up small deities at home and did puja while Sadhguru was there. He stayed for a few months in Ammampalayam 
and in this village Naganallur. Around 15 people knew that he had come and stayed here. Then he taught us how to make the medicine. These are all very potent ingredients. The grinding has to happen for 36 hours within three days. Only then it will become a paste. Otherwise the mercury will not become a paste. If it does not become a paste and if given to a person, he will die. We have to do it in devotion. We can only grind it one hour at a stretch. We cannot bear the vapors more than an hour. Then we take a break and again continue for one hour. Like that we go on and on and finally make the medicine. This medicine can save people with bites from cobra, russell viper or any such poisonous snakes. First we light incense and camphor to Sadhguru and then give medicine. Sadhguru has instructed that this should be done as a service and money should not be demanded. So when people come, we don't ask for any money. They may offer 25 paisa or 50 paisa as fees on their own. This is the third generation that has continued with the treatment for snake bites of such poisonous snakes. Sometimes they are even called to the location of the patient. Sadhguru Sri Brahma has not only taught medicinal treatment for snake bites. As mentioned in his compilation of poems Jivahakanni, he has also taught the relevance of other unique herbal combinations. There are references to black tulsi, sea salt, wild lemon along with instructions of their usage and their benefits. He specifically mentions Haritaki, Terminalia Chabula as an elixir which can be used to perfect the body. He says that if used correctly, it has the potency to replace yogic practices done for cleansing the body. Many years later, when Sri Kalaimani was studying in Sadhguru ITI in Kunnur, he came in contact with Sri Ramasami Adigal. I studied in Kunnur ITI run by Sadhguru Trust. They saw Sadhguru's photo with me and took me there. Ramalinga Swami asked me how I had Sadhguru's pictures in my position and then he came here and met my family. He said this village had the fortune of having Sadhguru's feet walk on it. So one should do Annadanam here and build a temple. Our grandfather did not take it seriously. My father and I were listening to this. So for the last 10 years, we had been doing Guru Puja and Annadanam. And we are keen to build a temple too. Last 15 years, we have been going to other Sadhguru ashrams. Whenever Guru Puja happens, we go everywhere. Similarly, others also come here. We have been going to other Sadhguru ashrams. Just before he finally disappeared, he blessed everyone and said, you will all live well and happily. And when they asked, Sadhguru, when can we see you again? I'll come back. I'll come back again with the name of Velai Papan. With white beard, white hair, I'll come back in a grand way again, he said. Krishna Padiyachi's wife Chellammal went and asked Sadhguru directly, I want to worship you daily. Teach me something. Sadhguru said, Yes, I'll teach you and you will achieve great progress. And he sang this song. He sang two verses and asked, Can you do this? Tell me more, Sadhguru. I can do this. She said. She was educated, so she knew things. She planted a stone and started worshipping it with the songs that Sadhguru had taught her. If you sing the Nataraja Pathu songs, I'll come and appear in front of you. I'll give you darshan and go. 
முன்னால் வந்து எந்த நேரமாக இருந்தாலும் நீ வச்சு அந்த பன்னெண்டு பாட்டு பாடி அது என்னை கூப்பிட்டேன்னா நான் முன்னால் வந்து அப்படி நின்றுட்டு ஷி யூஸ் டு சிங் அண்ட் வர்ஷிப் சத்குரு டெய்லி அன்னாடு இது கும்பிடுங்க we headed towards chidambaram the abode of lord nataraja because it was evident that sadguru shri brahma had visited and spent some time there the song natarajar patthu that sadguru recommended is a 10 verse poem it is written by sirumanavai munasami mudaliyar in a heart wrenching manner 300 years ago Sri Munasami pleads and yearns to Lord Nataraja of Chidambaram to allow him to be soaked in grace. And he also lists other capabilities in the occult and tantric sciences. He sings about how none of these capabilities compare to attaining the grace of Lord Nataraja. Mannadi Buddha Mudu Vinnadi Andam Ni மறை நான் அடியும் முடியும் நீ மதியும் நீரவையும் நீ புனலும் நீ அனலும் நீ மண்டலம் இரண்டு ஏழும் நீ பெண்ணும் நீ ஆணும் நீ பல்லுயிர்க்கும் நீ பிறவும் நீ ஒருவனியே வேதாதி வேதம் நீ பாதாதி கேசம் நீ பெற்ற தாய் தந்தை நீயே பொண்ணும் நீ பொருளும் நீ இருளும் நீ ஒளியும் நீ போதிக்க வந்த குரு நீயே இனி ஸ்போயம் ஜீவக கன்னி சத்குரு ஸ்ரீ பிரம்மா மென்ஷன்ஸ் அபவுட் சிதம்பரம் He says that the golden temple near Bhuvanagiri made him become a mountain of absolute stillness and silence. This reference to Chidambaram could also be a metaphor to the internal golden space of Chidakasha as written by few other siddhas. The word Chidambaram means Chitta, pure consciousness and Ambaram, the sky. Chidakasha This is an embodiment of the unlimited sky of consciousness. Tillai Vanam has been the abode of many siddhas and saints from the Tamil tradition. Many great legends like Tirumular, Patanjali, Vyagrapada were associated with it. The great yogi Patanjali had consecrated the linga and Tirumular had dissolved there. Virudhajalam is 45 kilometers from Chidambaram. Vridha means old and Achalam means mountain. This place is also known as Vridha Kashi. The Kumara Devar Veerashaiva Mat is located nearby. When we look at the Guru Parampara or lineage as listed by the Kumara Devar Mat and the lineage of Sadguru Shri Brahma, Guru Pitamuni is mentioned in both the lineages. It is also interesting to note that the name of Sadguru Shri Brahma's Guru, Shri Palani Swamigal, is in the guru parampara of kumara devar mat although he did not hold the position of the head of the mat this shows the level of respect he commanded in the kumara devar mat their official books mention him as parani ma munivan meaning the great yogi from parani coming from the veera shaiva tradition kumara devar wrote his methods in a book called sutta sadakam It is considered as the true book of alchemy by many. This book talks in great detail about ways to transmute the physical body into pranava body and further into the light body and finally into the bliss body. The bliss body merges with the ultimate without leaving any trace of the physical body. He names them in progression as the suddha deham, pranava deham and jnana deham. In early 19th century in Vadalur which is midway between Virudhachalam and Chidambaram lived a siddha of great repute he was Ramalinga Swamigal also known as Vallalar even though his time period was between 1823 to 
in 1874, there is a high probability that Sadhguru Sri Brahma visited or even stayed here on his way from Chidambaram to Virudhachala. Vallalar was considered as a continued reflection of Thayu Manavar because of the nature of his songs and his spiritual and social activities. Thayu Manavar songs have always been dear to Sadhguru Sri Brahma and it would have been natural for him to visit this fabulous attempt established by Sri Ramalinga Swami. He had done phenomenal work during his time in the fields of alchemy and siddha medicine which is practiced by some till this day. He initially was an ardent devotee of Chidambaram Nataraja and later gravitated towards formless worship with just a lamp flame. He spent a lot of time in Virudhachalam Kumaradevar Math and attained the mastery of dissolving the physical body. It is said that is why he kept his body covered all the time. He was seen as a rebel of his time because of his work in eradicating untouchability, poverty and women emancipation. He raised donations and established the Satya Jnana Sabha over an 85 acre area. Here, Jyoti or the lamp flame is the central deity seen behind the seven colored curtains. His final exit of going into a room and disappearing into thin air was also recorded in the British Gazette by the eyewitness who was a British official. Visiting these places and getting to know the inner accomplishments as well as the social activities of these great beings deeply humbled and touched my very core. What we think, we understand or know is so minuscule compared to the grandeur of what they went on to accomplish and leave behind. Sadhguru Sri Brahma's act of reviving a dead person, healing people with vibhuti, disappearing from a place with a clap of his hand, walking through prison bars and more. These are all unfathomable accomplishments. Although these were done at rare instances, they were not done as an act of miracle or for exhibit. In his Jiva Kani verses, Sadhguru Sri Brahma strongly discourages such displays and even mentions how Siddhis or traps for someone on the path of liberation. But what we know gives us a glimpse of the phenomenal levels of mastery that Sadhguru Sri Brahma had over his own energies and the complete control he had in manifesting and using them for people and in specific situations. As we got more and more inspired with these new insights into Sadhguru's life, we decided to trace the life of those disciples who were with him. We figured that if they had written any first-hand records of their experiences with Sadhguru, it would help us learn more about his life. And as it turned out, we were right. Our findings did reveal never before known information about Sadhguru Sri Brahma. But you may need to hold your breath till the next episode to discover those.